Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to the One Drop Shower Ministry of Preparedness. My name is Mike Albert. Today we are sponsored by AmberTracks.com. You'll go to that website for your emergency survival supplies and waterproof Bibles. That's AmberTracks.com. Amber like the color, tracks like railroad tracks. One word, AmberTracks.com. Uh, yesterday's broadcast, for some reason, was not um, retained. Uh, I did an hour and a half broadcast, and it turned out to be 46 seconds long. So, that's Satan. It, this never happened before in the two years I've been doing this. And um, we have to rebuke Satan. We have to uh, call him out and uh, plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast and this ministry. So, uh, we need your support in prayers and as well as um, uh, monetarily. Uh, so, go to the website and order your products or pass it along. And... Um, or you can go to our other website uh, for bunker building and uh, emergency survival uh, advice and consulting, which is worthingtonbunkers.com. That's worthingtonbunkers.com. All right, so we're going to wrap it up with Matthew 24 uh, about who do you serve? Are you a servant of Jesus or of Satan? Because if you're not a service, server of, of Jesus, you are a servant of Satan. You have to serve one. You can't serve yourself, and you can't serve two masters. And Jesus speaks to us very clearly about this here. And uh, there is no commentary for it. I'll be reading for the New King James Version of the Bible. This is the Andrew Study Guide, uh, which I use because it has the cross-references in the middle and commentaries below. It's a really awesome book. Really great Bible. <clears throat> All right, so make sure my settings here are okay. I'll uh, adjust the screens here because we are going to do current events afterwards. And uh, so hopefully we're not getting any echoes or feedbacks here. Let's mute that. Make sure that was uh, muted. Uh, let's switch over to this screen. But first, let's make sure that screen is muted. Praise God for that. You guys will not have heard a word I just said. Would that be better? I'm going to shave. Okay. Make me small over here. This a little bit bigger over here. This is the world map of incidences that are happening around the world that are not reported on TV uh, that we keep up to date on because we use these as lessons to learn about what is going to happen 10,000 times fold in the aftermath of something apocalyptic, doomsday scenario, and which could happen at any moment, which could set us back a thousand years when we need to live off the land, as pioneers did for thousands of years, um, where there might be no return. You know, it's said the governments tell us to prepare for bad situations. Two days of food, three days of food, it's all you need, we'll take care of you. FEMA to the rescue, Red Cross to the rescue. They cannot handle the masses if they stop spending money frivolously like drunken sailors and bloated agencies and unnecessary agencies like the BLM and NASA. You know that the FBI and the CIA are not allowed to share information? I mean, some of this... It's a shame we're even having this discussion. I often ponder what it would be like to take a thousand people and go to an island where there's no rules, no laws, no regulations, preferably Christians, and see what happens. Pioneers, you know, you get 10 acres, 10 acres, everybody gets 10 acres, you know, 100,000 acre land or more, you know, common areas. That's how the United States was actually, um, a lot out west was formed. There was land given to people what it's called, homestead or something. Uh, and it was a five-year program where if you were able to homestead the, the property, you were able to uh, prove you were a steward. I think it was steward. It was called stewardship your property. Maintain it. You were given that property for free. I don't know about taxes or anything, but I wonder if that's grandfathered in. I'm not sure. All right. It's a cloudy day here on Long Island. So I am going to be constantly adjusting the, uh, the temperature here because it's a bright sun. It's supposed to be 70 degrees. Could be 80 degrees in the car if it's um, air conditioning is not kept on. But more importantly, what the Bible has to say, let's give a quick prayer and rebuke Satan. Dear Heavenly Father, 
thank you for this ministry, Lord. Thank you for this 100-year plan that uh, we're able to communicate uh, to people here. And we ask that you please um, be in the mist here with your Holy Spirit. Please rebuke Satan from interfering uh, with the technologies here to record and to broadcast. And we ask that you please uh, bless all our viewers and their needs and um, their children, grandchildren and great-great-grandchildren. If they're so lucky to have some. Please bless their families and extended families. Help the children to get good schools and grades, uh, good good grades in school, and um, rebuke Satan, dear Lord, from whispering in their ear and their temptations. Um, we know that they are subjected to many temptations at such a young age, and it's hard for them to tell the difference between right and wrong, good and bad, uh, in situations and in people as well. Please protect your little ones, Lord. We ask that you please bless our nation, Lord. Help us to uh, glorify you in everything that we do, especially our, our leaders. And please help us to build a wall around this country on the northern and southern borders and to protect our water stronger. Help us to br bring our troops home, Lord. Close all these military bases around the world and this patrolling and let us just build a strong, strong force around us, Lord, here in our own land. Let everyone solve their own problems. Please put your Ten Commandments, Lord, back in public view everywhere. Airports, restaurants, billboards, hospitals, um, in uh, police stations, in courthouses, prisons, psychiatric centers, especially schools, Lord, regardless of their domination, private or public. If they want to have a footholding on this land, this Christian land of yours, they have to display the Ten Commandments larger than any other display train stations and uh, on the trains, Lord. Let your um, name be shouted from the rooftops. Speaking of rooftop shouting, Lord, we ask that you please expose the secret pedophilia societies uh, to the rooftops, Lord, and let those be arrested that are involved or financing or controlling this, Lord, uh, especially those like the Podestas and the Clintons and the Weinsteins, Lord. Uh, please, uh, Expose the darkness, the dark secrets, Lord, and help us to um, resolve and put a peace of mind in our hearts. Uh, we ask for justice, Lord, on Eric Holder and Obama and all those other uh, tyrants that uh, Loretta Lynch um, and Lois Lerner, all those uh, corrupted uh, individuals, Lord, that uh, suppressed and oppressed Christians and patriots. And, um, and uh, please get rid of Harry Reid and um, Nancy Pelosi, Lord. Let them be disgraced in their uh, in their outgoing uh, for incompetence. Um, Chuck Schumer, uh, please, uh, you know, Pete King, uh, a lot, a lot of bad people, Lord, in, in political positions of power. We ask that you please protect us from them and to um, expose their dark secrets and put them in jail, Lord. Please help, help us to get this accountability, Lord, going. Nobody goes to jail, Lord. Crimes are committed and, and atrocities and uh, against mankind and children, rape, murdered, molested, sex slaves, and nobody goes to jail, Lord. Please help us to, uh, to get the upper, not the little ones, the little fishes, the big fishes, Lord. And when we want the, you know, the Rockefeller, Bilderberg types, Lord, in prison, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Justice for the people is what we want, what we need, what we have to have. There's no... There's no second, uh, anything else, nothing else is acceptable. When was the last time we had a politician in handcuffs on TV? That, that, that there's been controversy over, there's been, you know, some sort of, you know, conflict, you know, they go to court, they, go, they don't go to court, they go to a hearing at best, you know, with now the new traitor, Trey Gowdy out there, uh, stabbed us in the back uh, with this Manford uh, issue, what's going on with Gates and uh, Podesta. We need handcuffs at the upper echelons, not the little ones. Forget the little ones. The little ones are easy to put in jail. You spend billions of dollars this country, trillions of dollars on the stupidest of things, and what we really need is justice. You know, folks, you got to open your mind to these distractions. You really do. And this is probably why yesterday's broadcast was cut off. I don't know if I got into this or not. But there's so much distractions and disinformation I know I was cut off, because this is what I did. I was talking about the um, weather, these, um, whatchamacallit, uh, the 
the computer would work now. Uh, the map here. And uh, pointing out a couple of other things to you to look into. And you need to uh, open your eyes into how things really work. Do your own research here. And uh, realize that there is a threshold that is not obeyed. Like, so, you know, like the... Uh, the police have this like line of blue or whatever it's called. They protect each other. Politicians are the same way. Lawyers, judges, they're the same way. They don't, they are held to a different standard of laws than we are amongst each other. And this is how this, um, um, whatchamacallit, is able to even have a grasp of any sort. This, uh, Manford and, um, Gates and, uh, Podesta thing with the Russian Trump um, indictment thing. But in that indictment, it's only 31 pages, go read it. In the indictment, there's no mention of Donald Trump and his campaign at all. So, you know, who's who's doing the uh, colluding here are those that are in that position. The lawyers, judge, police, prosecutors, district attorneys, um, the, the guy that's doing the indicting. And we'll find out, too, just that I'm sure Sessions isn't going to be on board either. So they're all in collusion. They're all, they all they put this team together to try to bring down Trump. But there's no fairness in that because there's no jurisdiction oversight, in other words. If there's a crime, where did it take place? And those are the ones that process that crime. Not the selected team that you select, hand pick, select all around. You know, it's not that type of indictment. Where's the crime? On what land? Is it in New York that it happened? So it's a New York um, prosecution. Anyway, um, I'm sure you. Had, I'm sure you see the keywords here that I'm looking at. So let's see if this gets also now taken down. All right, so we'll get into this later. Let's get into Matthew. The title of this is The Faithful Servant and the Evil Servant. There is a um, reference here to Luke 12, verses 41 through 48 uh, for uh, further study. Starting in verse 45, Matthew 24, verse 45 it only goes up to 51. There's no commentary for this, um, which begs to differ the possibility of self-interpretation. Well, let's see what we get out of this. Who then is faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household, to give them food in due season? Um, this could be imagery. Um, more than likely it is in reference to, you know, what we're studying here, um, Jesus' second coming, you know, when he comes, and tribulation, and how we are here on earth as, so I to say, as guests, and we are here to obey God's laws and rules, because we are his servants, we are supposed to be his servants, and he is our master. He feeds us. He clothes us. He gives us everything and anything that we pray for if he sees fit uh, for us to have it. We go through struggles by chance because of sin. God does not condemn us by, you know, not giving us something or injuring us or, you know, somebody does something to us. And God does not punish people. Things happen um, through sickness or, or um, injury or loss of a loved one because of sin. That's what it comes down to. This world is sin, and everything negative that happens in it, you could lay at the feet of Satan, not God. Um, so who then is a faithful and wise servant? Faithful and wise you need to have faith above all, and that faith gets developed through continuous prayer, continuous um, 
uh, association with you know, your church life and members and all these good things that bring about a more uh, a better connection between you and Jesus and you can develop that relationship over time and as a byproduct of that your faith develops sort of like love love develops um, over time you just don't you know see somebody and fall in love with them you know that's called lust that's called um, you know uh, fleshly earthly worldly um, you know wants desires you know, I did a whole video on that feelings and desires it's in the archive somewhere there which we are not to have an emotional attachment to we need to have an attachment to um, the Bible plain and simple straight academics Verse 46, blessed is the servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. This, this sentence seems a little bit, this verse seems a little bit short of completing its meaning, but I know it's trying to say that those of us that are continuously doing God's work and we are found doing God's works, we will be more blessed because we are found doing God's work. But in a shorter context, what this means is birth to death, do God's work. This way you will never not be found without doing God's work. Whenever he comes, you'll be found doing God's work. But what that does in turn, that builds up your relationship, your faith, that builds up your a higher chance of getting into the kingdom. Ah, oh, what happened? I don't have that window open. Darn it. Just missed it. Got to keep this window open. <clears throat> so, it's, um, and God does it with a few different things, with his laws and rules and, um, you know, his uh, ways to be a Christian, the fruits that we bear. It's forever. You don't, start and stop start and start start and stop it's unobtainable goals we cannot buy our way do good works and get into heaven it is by our faith that we will get into heaven that we get into heaven and even that is not of our own that is by the grace of god his mercy his holy spirit pressing upon us that faith that connection it's not that complex. It's really, really simple. Just do the right thing. Do what the Bible says. Verse 47. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. So, not doing the right thing. And if you're focusing on evil, master because you're not focused on serving God, um, you are then focusing on inheriting all the goods of the earth or that your master has to leave behind you. You know, you're myopic. You got the horse blinders on and this is what you see. You see the car, the house, you know, or the money or, you know, what's in the uh, life insurance policy or you know, this land or these material things other than the heavenly kingdom. Do you want the earthly currency or the uh, heavenly currency? The kingdom currency is what you should be focusing on, not earthly possessions. Verse 48. But if that evil servant says in his heart... My master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and an hour that he is not aware of. And he will cut him in two and appoint him his position with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this is like a double-edged sword here. You have to serve somebody. 
if you're serving a, a worldly master and you're not doing your job and he comes home and finds this activities that you're involved in, he's going to kick you to the curb. You're gone. You're done. Uh, you're out. Uh, now, when the other side of the coin is if when Jesus comes, you're not doing his work and it means you haven't been doing it all along or you're doing occasionally, you're not worthy of the kingdom. You're getting kicked out. So would you rather be kicked out of the earthly? You know, it's like the lesser of two, um, you know, goods. You don't want to be kicked out of the heavenly kingdom. You don't want to be, but it's okay if you're kicked out of the earthly kingdom, but not in that manner. So you want to be accepted. Reverse the polarities of all this. You want to be accepted not only in your job, in your family, in your community, but you also want to be accepted into the earthly, uh, the uh, heavenly kingdom as well. But God's law supersedes man's laws. So we cannot obey man's laws if they conflict with God's laws. We cannot serve two masters. Amen? And this ends with, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Um, that parallels to the do many, many, many satanic rulings in this planet um, that happen daily. We need to pray daily to not allow this to happen, to not uh, allow this into our lives, to shut that door on Satan daily, because he has a strong foothold in this world, and if you let him in your life, you have to close that doorway uh, forever and rebuke him continuously. Amen? Well, that wraps up Matthew 24. Let's get into some current events and see what's going on around this wacky planet of ours. Um, Madagascar is still on the current emergencies. It's been almost two months now from the plague with 24 updates. Um, I believe I did get into that yesterday. But there was a disruption in the big, big helicopter shaking the car going by. Same thing yesterday. This time, 10.35 a.m. There's a couple of filthy, filthy billionaires on this island that I live here in Long Island um, that have no regards for the laws. They're supposed to fly their helicopters, I think, 5,000 feet or 3,000 or 5,000 feet above. And if they don't, they have to pay a fine every time they don't. One way. There's a, I know there's this one guy, what the heck is it? Tea, Arizona T he owns, Voltagios. And every day he flies his helicopter, shattering windows, disrupting houses, and the politicians put up with it because he pays his fine every day. Instead of, you know, confiscating his illegal used, you know, if I took my car out and, you know, did illegal things with it every day, they'd impound my car. Or they'd suspend my license. So that pilot's license needs to be suspended. That vehicle, helicopter, needs to be confiscated. He flies one way to work, one way home. That's $1,000, $500 each way, fine. And he goes down to the town hall and he sends somebody down to him to pay that fine every day. Politicians won't do anything about it. They'll set the laws, but they won't enforce it. It's sort of like this. Hillary and Podesta and, the, and um, all these child molesting pedophilia rings that go around around the world that are enforced and actually um, helped by agencies as well, the alphabet gang agencies. Wake up, people. Open your minds. It's a wicked, crazy world we live in, and those in the power with the big guns like it that way. Um, let's look at the updates here. Madagascar. Uh, WHO, which is the World Health Organization. This is an update number 24 out of 50 days on November 1st, which was yesterday. Uh, continues to support the Ministry of Public Health and other national authorities in Madagascar to monitor and respond. Um, wait a second, I gotta 
make this screen larger, it's alright. Okay. Continues to uh, monitor and respond to an outbreak of plague, which is the pneumonic and um, bubonic plague. The number of new cases of pulmonary plague, which is pneumonic, has continued to decline in all active areas across the country. Amen. In the past two weeks, 12 previously affected districts reported no new confirmed or probable cases of pulmonary plague from August uh, 1st to October 24th. A total of 1,300, 1,309 suspected cases of plague, including 93 deaths, 7%, I was told 10%, and were reported. The figures in this report are based on a rigorous data cleaning, cleaning, data cleaning, I don't know what that means, uh, verification and analysis process, all, all these words, how about statistics, you know, boots on the ground, uh, aimed to give a better understanding of the dynamics of the epidemic. Of these, 882, 67% were clinically classified as pulmonary plague. 221, 17% were bubonic plague. One was septemic, septic, septic emic, septemic, In, and 186 were unspecified. What does that mean? Uh, further classification of cases is in process. All right, so they got different, many classifications, what they're saying of this plague. Mm, I lost my spot. All right. Um, antimicrobials recommended by um, this one agency. Oh, that's what it was I was doing yesterday, too, was this word here. This is what they're giving them. Proflatic, 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 proflatic antimicrobials. And I went and did a search. I'm going to remember this stuff to see what is the alternatives. for this antimicrobials, antibiotics. So now I'm doing this because we need to have a understanding of how we're going to combat these scenarios when there are no more doctors, hospitals, clinics to go to. And we have to rely on nature and plants for these cures, these treatments. We have to first be, uh, have to be able to identify them. Um, what do they look like? What are the symptoms? What are the signs? <sighs> from not only a Western point of view, but from a Chinese point of view. Chinese is the oldest herbal roots, extracts, oils, medicinal type of understanding for cures of ailments. They have a totally different diagnostic type of system. <coughs> you have to get into it. You have to, you don't have a choice. You have to look at this. Get a couple books if you can on understanding how their methods of looking at the body, asking certain questions. Are you hot? Are you cold? Uh, are you sweating? Do you have chills? Um, you know, are you shivering? Um, you know, what, what, your tongue, the color of your tongue, the color of your eyes, the color of your nails. Um, you know, the breath, is it your breath, do you feel it's like it's warm or is it hot? All these things and so many other, the skin, is it tacky? They have a different, totally way of looking. When the Americans, you go to the doctor, he's like, you know, takes your pulse. You know, that's another thing too, actually, the Chinese do is a rapid pulse, shallow pulse. Um... You know, they take your temperature. Another good thing, make sure you have um, temperature reading thermometers for your uh, uh, for your mouth. Different ways to do that. Um, really cheap those things. I have one. I think it was ten bucks, and you get the casings to cover it, um, so you don't contaminate it. Or you have to wash it off each time. Then, um, and these Chinese ways of diagnosing somebody, and then they give a herb 
to recommend a mushroom, something to, uh, instead of an antibiotic, uh, in a shot. In other words, you're not going to be able to go to the doctor and get your shots uh, for an antibiotic in the event of something. And trust me when I tell you, this is going to amplify thousands of fold in the aftermath. Why? Because there are no sanitations. Look at Yemen. Yemen's a perfect example, even though it's sabotage and it's um, agencies that are controlling this um, genocide that they're doing there because 800,000 people doesn't get the plague for sick, I mean, the um, cholera over months after month after month, and it continues. It's just not possible. I don't, I don't care what you say. You know, if you understand cholera, it comes in a wave and it goes. That's it. Quickly. A couple of weeks, month at the best, and then that source of that water is cleansed. There's no way that sewage, no way that, it's like people defecating in a toilet. It goes to the the treatment plant, waste tr water waste treatment plant center, and then they just dump it back into the river where they get their fresh water from, and it goes in a circle. That's not possible. Somebody's contaminating their water there. I don't want to get into that. Uh, trust me when I tell you that. So in off-the-grid scenario situations, we have to have understanding of what God has given us and how to heal ourselves from that. Medicinal plants. Get your medicinal seeds. Get your books, preferably laminated or some charts that are laminated that will last 15, 20 years at least um, because we want to pass it down through generation to through generation with training of hands-on. You have to be able to walk over to a plant and know after doing it for a couple of years, a few seasons, and say, okay, yeah, this is for a headache. This is for a fever. This is for a cold. This is for a flu. And this is how I process it down at this season of its growth, of its harvest. Is it the roots is it the stem? Is it the liquid in the stem? Is it the plant leaves? Is it, is it the, the edema that comes from the plant leaves? Um, do I boil it? Do I, um, you know, what's toxic? There's so many things you have to know about this, but it's simple, like anything else, after practice. But when you're in the wilderness, you have nothing to do but practice. You have nothing to do but live that life. For example... How well do you brush your teeth? How well do you shave? How well do you do these hygiene things that are, you know, second nature to you? This is how it has to be. You have to, what Dave Canterbury says from uh, Wilderness Outfitter says, you have to own that skill. And you will own that skill, but you first have to be able to at least be able to have the ammunition to get you to step B. Um, step A is... Um, getting in that wilderness, you know, off grid, when the oppression starts so bad, the invasion comes, whatever it is, EMP, um, you know that George Soros just donated like $18 billion into his charity foundation, and those foundations are anti-American, they're, he's, he's a white male, and he, it's, this Antifa thing is, against white males that control the world. Uh, billions. That's a problem, folks. How this man is allowed, is allowed to do this and is alive still is beyond me. Uh, it seems like he's been in a coffin for years, the way he looks. Um, but that's a problem because his ideology is to disrupt the Constitution and the American way of life. He doesn't want freedom of speech, which obviously he needs right now because it's a tool that he's able to use for his benefit of, of disrupting our, I don't want to say disrupt, destroying, annihilating his idea, his idea of America. He would like to see the United States like Iran or Saudi Arabia. That's his idea of the United States. It's just, just disturbing how um, it's allowed to unfold uh, for so long. Obviously, this is what the, the uh, powers that be want. Otherwise, they'd shut him down. He's a tool. He's a puppet that's being used. Even though he has billions of dollars, he's still a puppet. Because those that are at the top, those five five or seven families of the elites that 
uh, where they're beyond any form of money, you know, beyond trillions of dollars. They have unlimited power and resources, and money's not an obstacle. And people like Soros that are mere billionaires are used tools. Anyway, um, that's my spiel on that. Get back to this. Sorry it took so long. But it's very important to understand how to see these events, see what they're using, find the alternatives, get the alternatives, or at least the documentations, books, laminated. Go to FedEx Kinko's, get your own laminator, um, and start providing plenty of places to buy a laminator. Staples, uh, you can order it on eBay, so order the extra sheets. Or well, they charge you, I think, a dollar a page or something at uh, FedEx Kinko's to do it. You know, walk in and use their machines. Some of these things, even search out, you know, laminated, you know, alternative herbs, Chinese herbs, you know, medicinal herbs, um, diagnostic. I think even at FedEx Kinko's, you could find some of those already laminated on the shelves uh, with the maps. And it's just like information, like mathematics calculations, um, uh, what do you call that, first aid, herbs, vitamins, some of them are just there, you know, like three or four dollars, you can just pick it up. All right, moving on. <clears throat> We're still connected? All right. Fire, eight hours ago. Oh, these guys didn't update this uh, website, darn it. In uh, South Africa, vehicle accident, USA, Pennsylvania. Oh, we could do yesterday too because it was sabotaged. Vehicle uh, epidemic hazard in USA. Oh yeah, what was this? I read something about this. Um, five suspected cases of oh, the the mumps. The mumps at some American university in uh, Washington D.C. Can we steer this to a certain uh, street and building? Is there any way to uh, navigate this? Oh, it's also, someone else said a report. It might have been Dave Dave Hodges on uh, the Common Sense Show that DC Washington DC is actually sinking. I think it's like six inches every five years or something. I don't know what it is. Um, and he's like, "Can we uh, increase that to six feet a year?" <laughs> Even that seems like a bit much. Six inches every five years. That had, had have been less. Maybe six centimeters. Who knows? Drain the swamp. Hence the swamp. All right. Canada. Vehicle accident. Iceland. Volcano activity 10 hours ago in Bartabunga. All right. Paul Begley did a report on this. Um, I called it Cowabunga in Bartabunga. Badabunga is rumbling again. Iceland's biggest volcano has been on the verge of erupting for a good few years now, but over the past few days, four earthquakes have been detected in the surrounding area. While this earth shimmering might seem concerning, they are more indicative of what is happening beneath the ground and won't themselves cause the volcano to erupt. For now... There isn't any cause for immediate concern. The experts monitoring the mountain, which is the second highest peak in Iceland and last erupted in 2014, still predicts that it could be up to another few years before the volcano spews its magna over the Nordic nation. Some, of the concerned, some are concerned that if and when this happens, there could be a repeat of this infamous 2010 Iceland eruption. The ash cloud produced by the wonderfully named, can't pronounce that, uh, which is estimated to have been around 250 million cubic meters, 8.8 .8 billion cubic feet, wow, um, of ash, it seems, yeah, that, that in 2010 it erupted, wreaked havoc across much of Europe. For five days, much of the airspace was shut down, wow. And there were concerns that the ash could seriously damage the engines of any planes caught flying through it. This created what was it thought to have been the largest disruptive air travel since World War II. Earthquakes around active volcanoes are a common occurrence, as 
the magma below the surface migrates into the chamber of the volcano, the movement of such massive amounts of molten rock are inevitably cause the ground to wobble a bit. From this perspective, then, the earthquakes are not the cause of the eruption, but instead seen as a symptom of the impending blast that could occur at any point within years. When it comes to Iceland, there are always going to be reports that an eruption is imminent. This is because Iceland is a stranding, a straddling the fault line between America and Eurasia plates, thus making it a particular hotspot. It will always have volcanoes as magma snakes its way through this fissure and eventually bursts through the surface, but few actually do as much damage as this other one in 2010. If the volcano happens to be sitting under a glacier, then that chances are heightened. But even so, one study has already suggested that such an event is unlikely to happen in a few decades. What I find, you know, men think they are always at the pinnacle peak of their best and of all knowledge at, at, at any point in time in history. You know, and I refer back to the flat earth. For 500 years, we knew, we were sure that we were on a flat earth. The maps, the science, everything proved it right. And that was, you know, whatever, a thousand years ago. Five thousand years ago, we were, we knew, we were sure, we were absolutely convinced that we were the center of the universe and everything revolved around us. Imagine what we will discover and know for sure in any scenario nowadays. So in other words, I'm saying they're trying to pinpoint a prediction here of something that could be so catastrophic um, not to put much faith into it, you know, not, not to bet on, you know, this horse here because it is uh, unraveling, to say the least, of the catastrophic results if they're wrong. Rattling. Um, speaking of which, I'm, I'm not sure if it was... I did a video the other day on it on um, Tuesday. But let me just make sure you guys get to see this video just in case I didn't. Uh, or it was yesterday and it got to part of yesterday's disruption. <coughs> um... Was history? I got two messages. History, history. Um, yeah, things that I uh, watched the past. Any, any time. BP Earth Watch, three days until midnight. Yeah, this thing. This, this is this George Soros sponsored. Um, Antifa, whatever it's called. It'll cause some rattling, but again, it's it's. Divide and conquer. That's why George Soros is allowed to play this out, because it distracts us from putting Hillary in jail, bringing down the pedophile, sex, slave trafficking, child molesting groups. Because they have nothing left on this planet. They lost their innocence, so they want to go after the innocence of children. That's all they have, and that's what Satan wants, is the children. And things like this... All these puppet shows in courts and hearings and indictments, all a distraction, folks. Even wars, just a distraction. It's a distraction from Christ, this misinformation, misdirection, and a distraction from really focusing on them that suck us dry as slaves with money and uh, putting people in jail for the stupidest of things and so they could all get away with it. And occasionally they'll put some low low uh, low totem pole person in jail occasionally excuse me I got to put a battery I have to plug in my other um, battery here otherwise my battery is going to go dead so I'm charging up something from last night that didn't get charged give me a second here I'll figure out my wires here my wires are crossed there we go, and insert code, okay, 
All right, um, let me get to this, what I was trying to get to you guys here. It was an interview on, well, this guy's got some great things, uh, some great advice on oils and essential oils and things, and wild edibles, it's called Trillium, T-R-I-L-L-I-U-M, Trillium Wild Edibles, uh, used in his medicinal uh, closets days, yeah. But this was an interview by Doug Batchelor from Amazing Facts. I want you guys to watch this the whole entire hour and 10 minutes. Watch it from beginning to end. Listen to this guy's story. You want to have your mind blown about Satan and his power? How trickery he is? How much tricks he's got up his sleeves? This guy was saved. He knew he was being victimized by Satan and he reached out to Jesus. Did Bible studies. Satan didn't like that from this occult group that worshipped Satan. And he actually found himself one day on that threshold of making a decision between going to back to Bible study or back to the occult study. And he chose the occult, I mean the Satan, um, the Bible study, and Satan literally, or his, his minions, started choking him. Literally had their hands around, he started, he couldn't breathe, and he called upon Jesus and he uh, was let go. Great story. Got to listen to it. It looks like it's a little bit older because Doug Batchelor looks like he's got some younger looking hair there and mustache. Um, it says it's from October 31st, 2017, but it's definitely not. Uh, oh, I'm here. Let's see who's yelling at me and cursing at me. Who, why, how? Uh, well, Yarrow's. Oh, he replied back. Yarrow has over 12 different antibiotics in it. So it's really hard for the bacterial bacteria to accumulate to it. It would use I would use colloidal silver from time to time, but sometimes I like plantain. I take plantain. Okay, interesting. He gets back to you. Some of these guys don't. They don't get back to you. I, I mentioned to him he was taking yarrow and some other um, herb for his in infection he had. Oh, here it is, lobelia. So yarrow is very important for, I've heard this from a lot of sources, i got to get some, uh, but he said this lobelia is important because this lobelia enhances and increases any herb that you take, the potency of it, like 10 times he said. I couldn't believe that when I heard that, but I was concerned when he was doing this because, you know, that if he kept doing this for every single scenario and situation, that his body would acclimate to the, um, to the to this herb. And it would become less um, responsive to it, in, especially in the case now if he got something really serious, um, that it wouldn't have such an effect on it. Like he would build up a tolerance almost or a resistance to it, like a strain. Um, and he says no because he's got 12 different antibiotics in it, yarrow, which is awesome. But I have to wonder now, too, are there different types of yarrow? So like an organic or a... Um, Alcohol infused or non alcoholic infused, you know, an oil, the plant, the stem, the root, the leaves. Gotta look at that and see. But uh, he's very knowledgeable and he went through this great video he did about this uh, infection he had by his eye and it cured him. Praise God. Uh, but check out Doug Batchelor. This video here, my computer would work. No, computer don't work, so we'll just shut it down. How's that? There we go. All right, back to the map. Volcanoes, you know. This happens, we have to uh, pray for these people in Iceland there. Small little area right here. All right, moving on. Critical infrastructure disruption in Canada, like power outage or a bridge or something, 19 hours ago, 22 hours ago, an explosion in India, a level three. Let's see what's shaking in India. China had a snowstorm. Ooh. At least 16 people were killed and dozens more injured in an explosion Wednesday at a thermal power plant in northern India, officials said. Uh, the area's top administrative officer said a pipe carrying ash from the burning coal exploded in the newly installed boiler at the plant power plant uh, in Unchar in this state. Now, 
I'm wondering if this is the same boiler incident that was happened the other day too as well. There was a boiler that exploded. Uh, so we're going to have to keep an eye on that because I do focus on the ammonia and chloride now that are leaking and exploding uh, and some gases, chemical plants. Um, the chemicals are being affected and acting out abnormally outside the normal spectrum scope of our understanding of physics, uh, then our body as well is going to be affected. Because <clears throat> we are a cocktail of massive amounts of chemicals. <clears throat> I wonder if they could break down every single element, compound, chemical in our body. I wonder what that list would look like. All right? That'd be a big, long list. And I'm sure that fluctuates and changes with the common ones, you know? What I'm curious, too, is to know it like when you're born and when you right before you die, how that changes. Hmm. Snow blizzard in China 22 hours ago. Uh, epidemic hazard in Kenya. Terror attack in Afghanistan. Biological hazard in Russia. Hazmat, USA, North Carolina, 22 hours ago. What is that? 23 hours ago. Harrisburg Road shut down for some time overnight. 50 people evacuated uh, Wednesday morning due to a chemical leak. According to the Harrisburg Fire Department, the incident occurred between Farmar Mill Road and this other road. Crews were called to the scene just after midnight. Noticed a chemical smell in the area. Firefighters sent a rail car at uh, this transfer leaking site was leaking butadine <coughs> uh, butadine uh, a chemical that is used as a bonding agent in the reproduction of synthetic rubber I've heard this before plastic plants that reproduce plastic the chemicals leaking uh, the leak has since been controlled crews are unsure what caused the leak Highway 49 was shut down in both directions for some time due to the leak, but has since been reopened. Um, I th the first thing that came to mind was the uh, that red iodine type solution. I think it's called something similar to this butadine uh, for cuts and scrapes, so they use before surgery, disinfect. Um, all right, so um, tempted to put this in. The leak. I'm gonna do it. The file folder that I keep for these things. Uh, what was the last one I put in there? It was Hazmat Virginia, um, a division plant, Aqualon. Fire department see monitoring chemical leak at Aqua Aqualon division plant. It was the last one I put in there from. November 1st, so that was yesterday. Was this Aqualon? No, this was a chemical is ethylene chloride. So this happened yesterday. These both happened yesterday. Paste. Okay. Save. And back to the map. <clears throat> um, actually, I want the summary. I want the link and the summary. I got to remember to do that. couple more spaces between these two so I don't confuse them. Sometimes they look like one big section of information. Got to organize this better. Uh, okay, so state of North Carolina and we'll Mollard Creek Polymers Inc. That was the name of the company. All this information I want to keep because this website doesn't seem to have an archive of events. At least that I don't know about. Save as, no. no, we could have done that, save, I would have asked to, oh, what you want to call it, replace it, shortcuts, shortcuts, all right, so that was 23 hours ago, um, Virginia, that was the other one, okay, I see it one day ago, epidemic hazard in Nigeria, vehicle accident in Turkey, technological disaster USA in Nevada, let's see what that is. Multiple people have been killed in a mining incident 
Oh yeah, I did report on this yesterday. Yeah, but obviously the show didn't make it. So, all right. So there's been a mining incident in Nevada where people killed, according to Humboldt County Sheriff Mike Allen. The Marigold Mine in Valmy, which is west of Battle Mountain, issued a mayday call around 12:15 p.m. Tuesday, October 31st. Multiple agencies responded, including HCSO. Um, Winnemucca Police Department, Nevada Highway Patrol, and Nevada Division of Investigating. Not knowing what the situation was up there, once our deputies arrived, we were able to assess it and determine that it was a mining accident. Sheriff Aaron told news station as a result, there were multiple fatalities. We were pretty good uh, indication. We have a pretty good indication Hold on, now a noisy truck driver doesn't know how to drive his truck. He's downshifted instead of using the brakes. I hate when they do that. Um, good indication there was more than one fatality and multiple injuries. The incident happened at, on the mine site. According to the trooper, a uh, large mine truck and a shuttle. There was a collision between a large mine truck and a shuttle. Oh, boy. Still under investigation. I pray for these folks and their family. Huge blow to our community, he says. Terrible, terrible. All right, let's see if we get any updates here on this um, explosion in India. There was an update. Um, let's move on. Long time events. I don't see any updates there. 11 days ago from a fire in Virginia. 14, four days ago, four updates. Um, let's see what this is. Epidemic hazard in Uganda, four updates 14 days ago. One of those updates. Uh, Uganda's health ministry yesterday confirmed a second fatal Marburg virus case, which involved 38-year-old brother of the country's first lab-confirmed case patient. All right, so... Um, Marburg, another yet disease that is out there that we need to learn about, and what are the alternatives uh, for this virus? You can find out, see if they use certain things here, certain, um, you guys gotta start doing a lot of your own investigating. Uh, history of vomiting blood despite treatment, he died of an infection yesterday. Positive for the Marburg virus. I don't see any um, treatments that they're giving them here as I scan through this. <clears throat> Alright, let's see what we got on the earthquakes. Past 100 earthquakes over the next uh, 15 hours or so. I'll name out the location. Unless it's a 4.0 or bigger, I'll give you the magnitude. All right, we got Chile, Turkey, New Zealand, New Zealand, Switzerland, Bolivia, Alaska. Now what's uh, Switzerland's got a nuclear power plant, and so does Switzerland. Two of them are Switzerland nuclear power plant. That's not good. See this little symbol over here, yellow, triangles in it. Uh, let's see, Alaska. Um, one hour ago was that Switzerland one. Greece, France, Italy, New Zealand, France, 4.6, 4.5, I'm sorry, twice, my screen was dirty, two 4.5s in Japan one hour ago by nuclear power plants, not good. Iran, New Zealand, Alaska, um, New Zealand, Oklahoma, twice, two, two, two 3.3s, so they're doing the fracking a lot in Oklahoma. <clears throat> Man is so destructive. I really, they really are. I can, I can see how Al Gore is able to get people's attention and convince them that it's mankind's and cow's flatulence that's causing climate change. Send me money. <clears throat> All right, moving on. Earthquakes, earthquakes, earthquakes. Peru, 4.1. Iran, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. Uh, California three times, 
4.0 in Mexico, 4.0 in Mexico, New Zealand, New Zealand, uh, California, California, 4.8 twice in Mexico, 4.7, Papua New Guinea, uh, Kentucky, 2.3, New Zealand, California, California, Iran, Iran, Turkey, California, Nicaragua, 3.8, California, Guam, 4.9, five hours ago, 5.0, Guam, um, can't pronounce this, Asia, as, Azerbaijan, okay, France, New Zealand, New Zealand, Tonga, 4.2, twice, six hours ago, Alaska, Iran, New Zealand, New Zealand, New Zealand, Turkey, New Zealand, Iran, Chile, New Zealand, Italy, Italy, New Zealand, there's some big ones, New Caledonia, still, quaking, 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 over there, one, two, three, four, five, uh, 4.4 twice, 5.1 twice, and a 5.2, seven and eight hours ago. The day before, we had some big quakes over there, too. All right, Iran, New Zealand, Greece, New Zealand, New Zealand, New Zealand, Italy, New Zealand, Italy, New Zealand. Like ping pong, going back and forth here. 46, I'm sorry, 4.6, nine hours ago, Northern Marina Islands, twice. New Zealand, New Zealand, 4.1, Asia, that uh, Kazakhstan, Alaska, Puerto Rico, twice, what just happened, Tropical Storm Report, Pacific, let's click on that, see if we get it, routes, where is this Pacific storm, over by the Philippines, heading into Vietnam, looks like a category one is going to hit Vietnam, Cambodia, oh boy, Tropical storm brewing over there. These people got some nasty winds over there. All right. Um, what are we up to? This over here, this mess. All right. Eight hours ago, Iran, New Zealand, Greece, New Zealand, New Zealand, Italy, New Zealand, Italy. All right. Ping pong ball going back and forth here. Uh, Kazakhstan 4.1, Alaska, Puerto Rico twice, Greece, Oklahoma, Oklahoma. New Zealand, California, California, Romania, New Zealand. Again, look at this massive bounce of big quakes in New Caledonia. Again, 5'6", five, 5'5", six, five, 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 six, Indonesia, 11 hours ago. 3'4", 3.4 Indonesia. 4.4, Mexico, 12 hours ago. 4.6, New Caledonia, uh, Albania, Greece, and Iran. Let's just make sure where this... Um, New Caledonia is here. Probably off of the northern Australia there. Northeastern. And New Zealand. Right? Yep. That's where it is. It's a crazy, crazy area. I mean, 24 hours a day, this place is just rattling and shaking. I wonder if that's why they have all those uh, buoys over there. They got a lot of buoys over here between these two uh, lands, the United States. Launch the buoys. Here, I'll show you. Buoys. B U O B O U. No, that's not what I want. B O U. Thank you. I know it's B U O, but I'm dyslexic. See, look at all this row. Look at how well militarized these buoys are. That's it. That's the most strategic settings of buoys there are, besides Hawaii, I think. Uh, for warning systems. This is just a crazy area over here for volcanoes and earthquakes. They're getting stronger. Troublesome indeed. All right, that wraps up the earthquakes. Let's check out, uh, oh, we have the other things. The, um, obviously the tropical storms of super volcanoes. Let's see what we got. <clears throat> uh, tsunami information one day ago from... Um, 6.6 .6 in Caledonia and 6.8 in Loyalty Islands. Uh, no tsunami observed, which is a lie, because they did have like a half a meter tsunami. Uh, volcano activity. Of course, we have the one in Iceland there that's rumbling. And active tropical storms. We just did. It's tropical storm Damray, 28W. And super volcano activities for today and yesterday. Today's the, 20, the 2nd. 
So we want November 1st and November 2nd, which will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And the most we've had is 8, which is good. The, uh, the releasing pressure, but at the same time, disturbing because there is pressure. All right, let's see what's happening on my YouTube subscriptions, the channels that I subscribe to. Like that, Monkey vs. Bamboon. I mean, um, baboon, lions, house, all sorts of craziness. I like watching those National Geographic things. All right. Um, <clears throat> live, President Trump announces new Federal Reserve Chair nominee. So how about you shut it down? The Federal. How about you? How about you audit the Federal Reserve? I thought, was, where's that? Where'd that? Where'd it go? There was an auditing on the Federal Reserve. Disappeared. Right Side Broadcasting, live press briefing, Secretary Sarah Sanders, Common Sense Show. Out of fatigue, how to figure out many years, how many years you have left to live. Urgent, Snoop Dogg, new album, Make America Crip Again, sad. Uh, electronics and more, LED footwell lighting and outside temperature monitoring, monitor installation. Off-grid nation. Goat milking stand. Do it yourself with pallet wood. Mm -hmm. Crowd behavior. Las Vegas shooting reveals hoax. No surprise there. Harold Save. Chris Ann Hall. Do we really want limited government? Eva Fox. The Japanese method for the burning abdominal fat quickly. Okay. Uh, the Fox, this will, you will lose, with this, you lose weight, yes or yes. Uh, Eva Fox, you will not, oh boy, uh, Russia, uh, breaking news, taxing, taxi in London runs over four people. Uh, Rich Sorge, the communist, James Bond, rigid instructions, meteors. All right, I gotta run, folks. Just uh, go back on this if you want. Oh, Manhart, there was a shooting in Walmart in uh, Colorado. Guy walked in there, shot a couple people, walked out, can't be found. Manhunt on. So, you know, for the hundreds of millions of guns that are out there, there's, there's 300 million guns out there in America that Patriots own, and there's some loose nuts, loose, loose screwballs out there. With over a trillion rounds. That's a lot of guns. They're never going to take those away. They're never going to suppress those because we'll rise up and squash any opposition. Even if the whole world comes against us, they're not going to win. They'd have to nuke everyone. So, all these guns and bullets and ammos out there and people, it's pretty darn good. The amount of damage that could be done that's not done. The amount of shooting that could happen that doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? If you had to give it a, like a statistics, it's like, you know, out of all those, what is the ratio percentage of um, incidences of shootings? You know, and then you got to weed out the ones that are hoaxes too as well. So it's like one-tenth of one one-thousandth of a percent. You know what I'm saying? One one-thousandth of one percent or something. Or one millionth, you know. The amount of incidences that could happen that don't happen as compared to the ones that do happen, supposedly. All right, I gotta wrap this up. I'm gonna get on with my days taking too long. I'm trying to start these earlier. Let's uh, close up with a prayer here. There we go. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this ministry of preparedness. Please bless all our viewers and their needs. Please bless this ministry and our sponsors. And um, help us to uh, be a good servant to you, Lord, and not to Satan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, please visit our sponsor pages, uh, ambertracks.com and worthingtonbunkers.com. God bless you. Take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.